Since I'm soon going to be working in 4K resolutions, upgrading my graphics card to something able to deliver more performance than my aging NVIDIA GTX 770 was a necessity. Um, I would have preferred to get a Pascal-based Titan X, but, you know, at 1200 US dollars, it's a little out of my price range. Of course, the GTX 1080 was the next best option, and after looking at all the different cooler and PCB designs, I settled on the ASUS GTX Strict Edition. Um, on further inspection and doing further research, I found that there are three versions of the card, the 8G, the A8G, and the O8G SKUs. Uh, I got the 8G, which has the stock clocks on it, uh, the same clocks as the Founders Edition, um, at 1,607 MHz base clock and 1,733 MHz boost clocks. Uh, the A8G bumps that up a little bit more um, to 1,695 MHz base clock and 1,835 MHz boost clocks. Uh, and, but the O8G uh, provides 1,784 MHz base and 1,936 MHz boost clocks. Uh, I found out that uh, that's because the O8G's BIOS allows a higher voltage. Uh, like I said, the card that I got was the standard 8G, and its BIOS only allows for a 1.063 volts. And from what I've read, the upgraded BIOS, the O8G BIOS, allows up to 1.092 volts. Um, so I'm going to be flashing this card in the future to that BIOS to see if I can get a little more stability out of some higher overclocks than what I'm getting now, even though I'm getting some great overclocks. Um, I'm going to be making a video about that pretty soon, uh, and in that video I'll show if there are any performance gains to be had. So watch out for that video. Um, the external differences between the reference GTX 770 and 1080 are most notable in the size of the cards and the types of coolers. The 770 reference card, just like the 1080's uh, Founders Edition card, which is really just a reference card that's renamed uh, and overpriced, uh, use, they both use a blower style cooler, while the Strix uses a uh, recirculating type of cooler. Um, both cards are dual slot designs. The 770 measures 10.5 inches long by 4.4 inches tall. The Strix measures 11.7 inches long by 5.3 inches tall. Both cards use one 8 pin and one 6 pin power connector. Um, the 770's cooler feels sturdier than the Strix, and I do have to say that the Strix has a little bit of flex, uh, even though it has a full, full length back plate. Um, it still sags a little bit when installed on the motherboard in the case, um, but that motherboard, that, I'm sorry, that back plate does stiffen the card a little bit, and it's got some really nice RGB effects, um, like the Strix Gaming logo uh, on that back plate. If uh, your case shows that, uh, then that would be really cool, I'm sure. Uh, so... You know, that's one thing to think about if you've got an issue with flexing your motherboard or flexing your PCIe slot, then the Strix might not be the way to go. Um, as far as inputs or outputs go, uh, the 770 includes one DVI-I, one DVI-D, one HDMI 1.4A, and one DisplayPort 1.2 connection, while the Strix 1080 includes one DVI-D, two HDMI 2.0, and two DisplayPort 1.4 connections. Uh, the Strix also includes two four-pin fan headers that can be used to control case fans based on the GPU temperature. Although with this card, I have not seen temperatures rise high enough that I would worry about um, needing more more fan speed. Um, since I'm after performance with this, let's look at the 
differences in specifications. The GTX 770 uses the Kepler GK104 chip with 1536 CUDA cores, 128 texture mapping units, and 32 render output units, while the GTX 1080 uses the Pascal GP104 chip with 2560 CUDA cores, 160 texture mapping units, and 64 render output units. That's 66.6% .6 more CUDA cores, 25% more texture mapping units, and 100% more render output units in the GTX 1080, as opposed to the 770. Uh, core clocks come in at 1046 MHz base and 1085 MHz boost on the 770, and 1607 MHz base and 1733 MHz boost clock on the GTX 1080 from the factory. Uh, memory differences are pretty extreme, with the G GTX 1080 using 8GB of GDDR5X RAM as opposed to the 2GB of GDDR5 in the 770. Uh, by moving to the 1080 I'm getting four times the amount of memory, uh, but I'm also getting a lot more speed since uh, the GTX 770's GDDR5 is factory clocked at 7 GHz effective but the GDDR5X in the 1080 is clocked at 10 GHz effective speed. Um, all of this means I should see impressive increases in performance for both gaming and professional workloads. Uh, and I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm going to be working in 4K here pretty soon, so uh, I also might move into virtual reality content creation, and that should be within my reach with this card as well. Uh, with all that said, let's take a look at some benchmarks to see just how much of a difference all of this extra power will produce. Uh, the, test, the test system specifications are as follows. Uh, ASUS Z170-E motherboard, Intel i7-6700K CPU, clocked at 4.6 GHz, 32 GB of Patriot Viper DDR4 RAM, running at 2,933 MHz, 960 GB of SanDisk Ultra 2 SSD, 2TB Seagate Hybrid SSHD, a Thermaltake Smart 650 Watt Power Supply, Windows 10 Pro, and all of this is stuffed in a Corsair Carbide Series 300R case. <laughs>
that looks like about a two and a half times increase in fur mark although I should note that the fur mark scores are really odd and I don't think they're scaling properly there may be something wrong with the way that fur mark is uh, scaling or changing resolutions as we got no change in FPS for the GTX 1080 between 1440 and 4K as far as the standard clock and the overclocks only see one FPS difference and with the 770 we only see one FPS difference in both instances uh, between 1440 and 4K so something's wrong with Furmark I'm not sure what it is but those are the numbers that I got so we'll look at it that way and it's roughly a two and a half times increase um, in performance for the 1080. With 3D Mark Time Spy, DX12 title, uh, DX12 benchmark, we're getting roughly 3.7 times increase. Now this is the only DX12 uh, benchmark that I ran. I did not run Rise of the Tomb Raider in DX12 because when I did run it in DX12, the scores were actually lower than they were in DX11. So I went and I looked around on the online at some of the forums and a lot of people have said that Rise of the Tomb Raider is not well optimized for DX12. So we just left it in DX11 mode to do all of our testing. So with 3D Mark Time Spy it looks like uh, roughly 3.7 times increase in performance at 4K from the 770 to the 1080 in overclock and for 3D Mark Fire Strike DX11 benchmark um, I'm going to go with the standard clocks here to take a look because at 4K, which is 3D Mark Fire Strike Ultra, that's the 4K test, uh, or 4K benchmark, I should say, um, I got a big fat warning that popped up when I tried to run it with the 770 that said, hey, stop, you don't have enough VRAM. Three gigabytes minimum. And, uh, only has two gigabytes in the 770 reference. Some of the partner cards had four gigabytes, but not the reference. The reference only has two gigabytes of VRAM. And so I'm going to chalk up that funky overclock score of 391 as opposed to the standard clock score of 639. I'm going to chalk that up to uh, that VRAM issue and the fact that the drivers aren't optimized and uh, there's not enough VRAM. So there's obviously some sort of issue running. Uh, fire strike with that little VRAM. Uh, but looking at the standard clocks, it looks like a 7.9 times increase in performance. So obviously for 4K, the 1080 is going to do much better than the 770. And in some cases, the 770 wouldn't have been able to run the software anyway, as we saw with Rise of the Tomb Raider. Uh, I hope you guys learned some stuff here. I certainly did. Um, I'm going to be making a video in the near future showing the differences in quality or performance that can be had on the Asus GTX 1080 Strix Edition standard 8G SKU that I have when you flash the 08G BIOS to it. I've already grabbed that BIOS. I have the flashing tool and now that I've made this video I'm going to move on to flashing the card and see how much more performance I can get with a little bit more voltage uh, that should be allowed by that BIOS. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. If you disliked it, go ahead and hit the dislike button, but please tell me in the comments why you disliked it and what I could do to make better videos for you in the future. And if you'd like to see more videos from me when I release them, please hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified. Again, thanks for watching. See you next time.